Day 3, October 9th. For this afternoon's hunt, I'm heading back to the small food plot that we made. Uh, I think we made it last summer and got it planted uh, towards the end of last summer and into the early fall. This has really come in nice and thick. It's a clover plot back in the timber. And I'm hoping that this is part of uh, Lefty's range. Uh, I, I ran camera in there for about 10 days and never got a picture of him uh, on this little plot. But there was a lot of does coming in there. And that makes me think that as a minimum, we should be able to try to get a doe out of there tonight. It's never a good sign when you're driving to your hunting area and, and you have to run the air conditioner uh, to stay comfortable in the truck. So it's a little bit warm tonight. Not much wind, uh, so you, know, you get warm and still. Normally those aren't good conditions, but you never know. I mean, there's been some nice, nice deer killed uh, under non-ideal conditions. So all you gotta do is be in the right place at the right time and get lucky, and it's not gonna happen if you're not in the tree. So we're gonna head back there. I'll bring you an update once we get in the spot, and I'll talk a little bit about how we created this food plot and uh, some of the, the different bedding areas and so forth that's set up around this. give you a quick rundown on how this spot sets up. There's, um, we're probably about 100 yards roughly back into the timber here on this little trail that we made. The food plot's maybe a quarter of an acre, maybe a slight bit bigger than that, and it's L-shaped. We can't see all the way around uh, to the other side of it, but it's so small that any deer that come out in there, I'm sure, are going to wind up someplace where we can see them. All around us now, other than the direction that we came from, is bedding areas. So there's a draw that runs through right here in front of me, and there's a pond at the head of that. And I've often thought that would probably be a pretty good spot for a stand is right on that pond, because the deer funnel up around that draw and go right past that pond. But, you know, we just have not gotten that far yet. We'll keep watching it, you know, over the course of, you know, as many hunts as what we put in here and just see if most of the deer end up going through there. And if they do, we'll end up, like I said, putting a, uh, a stand over there. A ridge top. Over there, bedding area, draw. We're on a ridge. There's a bedding area behind us. Straight across the big ditch is where we were getting the pictures of uh, Lefty uh, earlier in the year, probably. I'd say he's, that spot's maybe 300 to 400 yards away in that direction behind me. So we're kind of in his core area, more or less. We don't know for sure exactly, I guess, where his core area is, but uh, if we had to guess, uh, we would like to think that we're in it with this food plot. So maybe as the season goes on and the rut really gets rolling, because this spot does seem like it attracts a lot of does, this might be a good, a good place to pick him off when he starts cruising and, and looking for, for does a little bit later in the season. We spooked two does coming in, uh, one of them off the plot, and one of them must have hurt us or something, and she snorted at us from the direction that we came from. So that's the downside of these still days, is it just seems like the deer can pick up on every little thing that you do. But we're gonna sit sit in here. There were a lot of scrapes along this little trail that we walked in on. I think there were at least three or four of them. And that's a good sign. It means the bucks are kind of a little bit more active here. So maybe we'll see something come cruising through that at least would entertain us some, and then uh, possibly even end up shooting a doe. left in my hunt and uh, so far I've seen two fawns and uh, a really nice looking one-year-old buck came right down in front of me so it's it's a uh, it's really still and uh, it's just down to thermals carrying my scent now I dropped a little wind checker and it just fell straight right before it got to the ground it started to curve down the slope so it's, you know, under those conditions, it, like I've said many, many times, it doesn't seem like the deer move very well. But uh, you never know. I mean, the biggest deer I've ever killed in my life, I killed on a dead calm evening. So you don't want to ride them off without, you know, hunting it all the way to the end. So that's what we're going to do here. Anything else that comes out into this plot or behind us on this trail that we walked in on, We'll show it to you. Otherwise, uh, 
plan on, uh, I know I'm not gonna be able to be in the tree for the next couple of days, but there will be some more video blogs coming this week. So keep checking back and I'll keep bringing you the action right here from the muddy stand or the redneck blinds right here on Winky's video blog.